Hi there, it's Diane the Nursing Geek. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you have been here before. Today is a request video on arrow injuries in writing. Something that I've been meaning and trying to get done for a while. Um, the reason for that is also the caveat that I will include, which is that I'm not primarily a trauma nurse, so I had to do a lot of homework to make sure I got it right, because my initial response, well, it didn't change much, um, probably would not have had as much information to help you out with. Also, there are so many different types of arrows that I felt like I really needed to go get a look at some and capture some of that variety. I will link either the ones from this little field trip or something similar below, although you could just Google, do an image search on Google for arrowheads and you will see a wide variety. But first let's cut to a little field trip to Dick's Sporting Goods arrow and archery section. So we're in Dick's Sporting Goods, which is an excellent place if you want to go look at different types of arrows um, or even get some and use their archery lane to learn how to fire them. There's a number of different types of points an arrow can have and that's going to make all the difference depending on what your character is doing. So. If they're doing just target practice, little round bolts like this are probably all that's going to be at the tip of the arrow. So that's not going to cause a whole lot of injury. It'll still cause injury depending on where it lands. But let's look at some things that are meant to do a little more damage. These are actually for crossbow bolts rather than arrows that you would use with a bow. But you can see, hopefully, that they have a lot of edges that are meant to make it difficult to pull it back out. And pulling it back out is going to cause more injury to whatever or whoever has been shot than just having it go right through. These would go on an actual arrow that's used with a regular bow. And they're also meant to cause an awful lot more damage if you pull them back out. And if your character or their antagonist is really um, going for maximum damage, they might have something like this. I don't even quite understand how they work, but you can see that they open to differing degrees. Presumably once it's reached the target and then goes to pull back and goes out like that so it's not coming out no matter what you do. So that's just a quick walkthrough of different types of arrow heads that might be involved so you can visualize what types of things might affect how your character is injured and what you're going to have to do to patch them up, assuming they're getting patched up. So now that you've had a chance to see, not too clearly in some of those cases, what modern arrowheads anyway look like, you can see the variety of problems your character could have who has been shot. I'm going to link below, if not those exact arrowheads, something close. But I also recommend just doing a Google image search on arrowheads because you'll see plenty of ancient through modern varieties that could potentially be useful to your story, depending on where and when it is set. So there's three things about arrow wounds. First of all, they're wounds. Second of all, their puncture wounds, and then third of all, their impalements. Let's look at the wound part first. 
with wounds, a lot of it is location, location, location. Because wounds have three things about them. You want to stop the bleeding, prevent infection, and promote healing. As far as stopping the bleeding, that depends on where they got hit. Presumably, you didn't just kill the character. Otherwise, if none of the rest of this is all that interesting. If, you, if it's just, you know, it was a headshot with a crossbow bolt or whatever, and they're just done, that's it. That's all you need to tell the reader, really. But if it's somewhere else, then the first thing that either they or the person they are with are going to try to do is stop the bleeding. And how doable that is, is going to depend on where it is. I'm going to link below a map of arteries and veins to help you sort of picture where the wound would need to be to either hit or avoid an artery. Arteries are the blood vessels that are taking blood from the heart to the body, so they have a lot more pressure. And depending on how close to the heart they are, the closer in they are, the larger the volume as well. So that's gonna impact how much blood there is and how easy it is to stop it. There are a number of different ways, especially for limb arterial wounds to stop the bleeding. Even if it's an arterial wound, you can do a pressure point along that specific artery so that you're not cutting off all the blood flow to the whole limb and risking the limb entirely, but you're stopping the blood that's just gushing out of this wound. They may or may not have any idea how to do that. They may go for a tourniquet. So that is another dramatic piece. Do they know that that puts the limb at risk for having to be amputated? Because the longer that tissue goes without blood supply, the more tissue is going to die and the harder it is going to be to save the limb. So more dramatic considerations. Or maybe it's strictly a flesh wound and they can just put pressure around the arrow. So those are some of the elements of it being a wound. Now let's look at the fact that it's a puncture wound. Remember the second thing I th said for wounds was prevent infection, which usually means clean it up and throw some antibiotic ointment on it. You'll see from one of the other articles I linked below that's just general puncture wound first aid. Um, you typically don't want to dump iodine or alcohol or whatever right into the wound. You risk damaging healthy tissue and then having it not heal as well. There's a reason it hurts to do those things because you are actually damaging healthy tissue. That said, your characters may not know this, and they may not have a whole lot of, even if they do, they may not have a whole lot of options. So they might be dumping 100 proof alcohol over it um, and just hoping that that kills any bacteria. Or, and you've probably seen this a time or three, either in books or movies or on TV, they may opt to try and cauterize the wound to deal with both the bleeding and the potential infection. Typically that means taking something that is really, really hot and jabbing it right into the wound to basically seal off everything. You're burning off everything. And hopefully closing. It doesn't always work quite as neatly as it typically does in the movies, but it probably should if you're going to bother using that approach um, in your story. So, you know, hot poker, hot knife, 
that gets interesting because you're trying not to cut anything, but that's what you have that's metal that you can stick into a flame and get really hot. So that would be another way to try and deal with both the, the bleeding and the potential for infection. Being a puncture wound, it's harder to get it clean and it's harder to make sure that you have really ensured that whatever you have that's supposed to kill bacteria is everywhere that it needs to be because it's going in and it's a narrow uh, point of entry, narrow-ish. The third thing about arrow wounds is that they're impalements, which means the thing is still sticking out of the body, right? They've got something still sticking out of them somewhere. In the article, below about EMS care of somebody with an impalement. That impalement was a knife. It was actually in the heart. And what they had to do was use gauze and tape to secure it so that while they were transporting this person to the hospital, the knife couldn't move and cause more damage. And as it turns out, it actually was, it had entered the heart. Um, I'll let you read the details on that below because um, you might find it very useful for, if not your current story, maybe a future one. Um, assuming you're not getting that tricky, and I wouldn't go that tricky unless your characters are in a time and a place where they can see an actual surgeon, whether, you know, our conventional type of surgeon or magical surgeon or something, somebody who's actually able to see, okay, here's where it is in the heart and here's how we deal with it without making everything worse. Because that was the point of showing you all those arrowheads. They're designed to make matters worse when you mess with them. If it's a flesh wound and there's no hope of some sort of medical or magical professional who's going to be able to fix it when you get to them, then what they may likely opt to do is just push the arrow through because pulling it back out is going to make everything worse and hopefully they know that unless you want them to make everything worse then by all means have them yank it out <clears throat> and then we're back to the problem of bleeding <laughs> everywhere um, but they may need to push it through to get rid of it and then just try to sterilize it and then cover it somehow um, and hope for the best if they don't have any chance of getting to somebody who can actually fix it, who has access to either technology or magic that can make sure there's no infection, make sure there's no additional damage, repair damage that's there. If there is a possibility of getting some kind of help, they just need to get to it, then the character or the person they're with may want to cut the arrow short, either just outside the body or as flush to the skin as possible so that there's nothing there as they're you know going through the wilderness or wherever they are to make this thing move around and make things worse. Of course, if you're looking to have your character end up dying anyway, that could work. They've got an arrow here. It didn't hit their brachial artery, but either they're unable to really stabilize this for some reason, or they're unable to cut it short, or they just don't know that that's a good idea. Most Characters would figure this out pretty quickly. If this moves, it hurts more. Don't let it move. But if for some reason they can't do anything about that, and you're going to kill the character off anyway, then just have it move enough to sever the brachial artery and they will bleed out. Um, presuming you don't want them to do that, give them a way to either stabilize it so it can't be moved 
or cut it down as much as possible. And that's going to depend on the material that the shaft is made out of. Is it just plain wood? Is it some sort of modern or futuristic compound that is really hard to break? Um, if so, what is needed to cut it? That's, there's such a range of possibilities, I'm not going to try and cover them all. It's impossible. But those would be the considerations. If you want your character to be able to stabilize it, you need to give them a way to stabilize it. If you want them to be able to cut it, then you need to make sure the arrow is made out of a material that they have the ability to cut based on what's available to them. If you want it to get infected, then make sure they don't have any way to disinfect or clean it. No, you know, no or very minimal clean water. Um, and nothing, you know, you've probably seen in any number of movies or TV shows where they'll just take the, the high proof alcohol and dump it over the wound um, in hopes that that's going to kill off the bacteria. They may do that if you want them to have a chance of killing it off. If you don't, if this is a character who does need to eventually get get this wound infected and either then eventually get treated or die, um, then don't have that available to them. Promoting healing is where wounds get really varied. I'm going to go with the very basic here of just either you're going to get them to a professional, again, whether that's medical or magical, depends on what world you're writing in, who can set it up to heal. You can just leave it at that, unless it's a medical drama and you really need to get into the whys and wherefores, which is much more than I could cover in a single YouTube video. Um, but some way of keeping it clean, keeping the outside dry and the inside moist so that the cells can move and heal and get it all together. Um, depending on how deep the wound was, might or might not end up getting stitched shut. But for the most part, the drama doesn't tend to be in the wound care piece. It tends to be in the immediate, this happened, oh my gosh, we can't get help, so we're on our own, or it's going to take some doing to get to help, so what do we do in the meantime? So hopefully I've covered those pieces for you. Um, if there are other specific questions you had related to a particular story or scenario, um, please pop them in below and I will do my best to answer them. Again, with the caveat that I'm not a trauma nurse, and I definitely have so far not had to treat an arrow wound ever, and I hope to keep it that way. That's it for now. Uh, so, until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye.